yield your members to righteousness. If you want to be the servants of the devil, you yield your members to unrighteousness. That's the dividing line. It's how are you conducting yourself before God... It's not what you say, it's it's how you conduct yourself. Mm. Actions speak it's louder your than conduct. words. Actions speak louder than words. Yes, it's your conduct. And and you're not it's not that you have bad conduct simply because you're living in a tent in Seattle and you don't have anything. That that doesn't determine that you are conducting yourselves improperly. But if you are engaging in activity that is sinful according to the scripture such as drunkenness or fornication or, you know, defiling the temple of the Holy Spirit with some kind of a drug, then you are an enemy of God through wicked works. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 that even when we were dead in sins, we were quickened together with Christ. So you might be dead in trespasses and sins now, but if you come to Jesus... You receive the life of Jesus within you. And when you receive that, according to Titus 2, it says that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we are to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So you cannot do these things that are sinful and still walk in holiness. Mm. Because holiness is based upon your conduct. Mm. It is based upon your conduct. Wow. They are not separated from each other. You can't be spiritually holy and in your flesh commit evil or do evil acts yep. or steal or lie or cheat or commit, or commit adultery and these things. See, we didn't come out here to, to bring the hammer of God's justice upon you or even condemn you. We're here to tell you that you are under the wrath of God and that you will receive the hammer of God's justice. Yeah. Because God yeah. will judge His people. He is, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. God is going to judge the world. Yep. God is a just judge. The Bible says in Psalm 9, He's prepared His throne for judgment. Wow. He will minister judgment to the people in uprightness. We are not judging you. We are not condemning you. We are telling you that you are about to go to judgment. And at that judgment, you will be judged. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's you're right. It's not for a, a, another person to condemn or judge another person in that way. But we are showing you that God, the judge of all, will, will judge, judge you. you. On judgment day. It's Can you imagine the feeling? Oh. Can you imagine oh. the feeling oh. of standing before a holy, just, righteous God on the day of judgment and God says to you, I never knew you. Depart, Depart from, from me. I don't know you. You're sentenced to eternal fire. Can you imagine receiving that sentence? The sentence of eternal damnation on that day. The feeling of sorrow that will be upon you. Oh. I was just thinking about that with my brother the other day. I said, brother, what is going to be the feeling of an individual? What is going to be going on in their mind when they are handed the sentence of eternal damnation? When, when everything has been, you know, all the books are open, your name's not in the book, God says, okay, you're judged, depart from me. Can you imagine the feeling that will be going on inside yeah, the mind crazy, of the man. individual that's crazy, that receives man. that sentence? Oh, it's man. not. Oh. I mean, there have been people in the world that oh. have received the death sentence that's in the terrifying. courtroom. That's terrifying. That's terrifying. They've received the death penalty. Can you imagine the feeling that they felt oh. when the judge says, 
you're going to die. Uh, you receive the death penalty. You're going to hang. So or you're going, going to the electric chair. Lord, or you're going to the gas chamber. Right. Or you're going to whatever, the firing well, squad. Just what he's I think I still do that. I, about, that like, most of it's lethal injection. The like people have received that sentence before in a lonely courtroom. The sentence of death. The sentence of death. Oh, that's terrifying, But you see, here's the thing. There's no appeals court. After that sentence, there's no one you can appeal to. It's over. That's it. It's over. If you're handed a sentence in the United States, in a court, you can appeal that to a higher court, and ultimately, you get to the Supreme Court. But there's many appeals that take place before you get to the Supreme Court. Once you stand before God, that is the Supreme Court. Oh. There's no court higher. You cannot appeal that sentence to a higher court. So if God says you're condemned to hell, not only do you deserve it, but you are going to receive it. There's no re there's no recourse. There's no second chances. There's no court to appeal to. Wait, Matthew, let me say something real quick. Well, well sir, I mean, I just do some drugs. You know, I, I steal from the guy in the tent next door. And I've done a couple sexually immoral things for money. Why am I going to hell, Matthew? Why am I the one to go to hell? First of all, we're all born. We're all born defiled in our flesh with sinful desires and passions. You're not going to hell any more than somebody else that lives in a high rise in New York City. Hmm. That's, that's bringing in whores. Hmm. And bringing in prostitutes. Or has a million dollars or is richer than Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, that guy went to hell, too. And he had it all. He had billions. He had millions. What about whores and prostitutes? It's an abomination to God, man. I'm not told you we were not judging. I already told you we weren't. We're telling you that you will stand before God, man. You're going to stand before God. Okay, well, that's great. You need to get a master's degree in the Bible. You need to read the Bible. It's called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's That needs to be your master's degree. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Get out and read, read the Word of God. Let's go. Because I was raised in the church. Ma'am, are you trying to justify prostitution and harlotry? And first of all, first of all, we're not even condemning them. We're telling them to get saved. That's right. We're telling them to get saved. They come to the knowledge of the truth. I'm not putting them down today. Don't use words like that. Well, don't use words like that. That's, you have to acknowledge the problem. You have to acknowledge the problem. If you, if, you, if you don't acknowledge that you have a problem, you'll never be able to solve it. What do you mean we're here? What do you mean we're here? God's there. We're here. You want to be here. You can solve the problem by solving this first. Sickness of the heart. First of all, if you pull, if you pull the plank out of your own eye, then you will see clearly. You will see clearly to pull the the log out of your brother's eye. That's what we do. I'm not casting any stones. Do you see any stones in my hand? There's no spirit. We've been here for two hours, ma'am. There's no stones in my hand. We're not killing anybody. We're not killing anyone. Yeah. We're not hurting anyone. We're not hurting anyone. You know what's hurtful is to lie, is to lie and tell people, you know the Bible says, you know the Bible says in, in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 24, it says, he that says to the wicked, you are righteous, nation shall abhor him. That's what it says in Proverbs 24, 24. If I tell the wicked, if I, ma'am, ma'am, if you tell, if you tell a wicked person that they are righteous, that's an abomination. It's called lying. Oh, wait a minute. So am I, am, am I to tell? Am I am I to tell? Am I to tell the prostitutes and harlots that that is acceptable behavior? Should I tell the prostitutes that that's acceptable? Oh, it is. That's acceptable. Absolutely, because Mary Magdalene was a, a prostitute. No, no, you don't see that. Oh, no. Where do you see that? Well, she said no, Mary Magdalene, Magdalene was a prostitute. Was. You're, you're telling the people. The one -time woman. So you're telling me. You're telling you me that that's okay. And you. You're no. telling me that's okay. No. no. You just told me it was okay. Absolutely. That's crazy. It's okay. 
is because he really? can't show his race. That's in the Bible. It's so okay to live in sexual immorality. Why are you reading? Really? Really? <laughs> oh, come on. You're a complete heretic. <laughs> You're a complete heretic. You have not read the Bible. I don't care any, how many master's degrees you have. You cannot live in sexual immorality. That is unbiblical. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's called fornication. You will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. How many master's degrees do you have again? Okay, well your mom didn't teach you the Bible. Because the Bible says the fornicator will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's true. Come on, give it. It's true. It's true. It's true. How old is the letter J? It's true. It's not that old. It's, it, yeah, see, there you go. It's spelled with an I. It doesn't, you know what? That's what you guys want to argue about. You want to argue about whether Jesus is spelled with an I or a J or what language it's in. It doesn't matter. If you don't depart from evil, you are not a child of God. It doesn't matter if Jesus is spelled with an I or a J. You can continue to speak over me, but it doesn't matter. Until you live in sin, until you live in this filth, his grace cannot be glorified. Because he lifts you out of the muck and mire. Okay, and that's what and he was sets saying. you on the other he side. He he said, but you, you don't come have out. to. The Bible says to come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. That's what he said. That's what it says. It doesn't say you continue in it. Now let me say this. No, I'm telling you. The Bible says you have to come out. You come. You don't know it, though. You believe in God, man? You're Christian. Do you know the, you know, okay, do you know what verse I'm quoting to you right now? Come out from a moment and be separate, says the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. He's been riding with me and Have I will give you All right, praise God, bro. Indeed. Yeah, she's, 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 she's saying that it's okay to live in sexual immorality in and sexual still go to heaven. Of course. No, 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 that's, that's untrue. Yeah, well, tell them, what, what's, why is sexual immorality unbiblical? And you're thinking that grace will abound. That's the word of God. That's right. Directly against, in direct yeah. opposition to the word. That's right. That's right. So you're saying that sexual immorality is directly against the word of God. It is. Yes. And is a path not to heaven, but to the place that's hotter. Yes. That's right. Amen. Well, that's right. Well, good word. Yeah. She's trying to justify, but I mean, we don't like to preach against it because we've even engaged in sin, when, when we were in sin. You know, back back when I was before, yeah. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. So, are you set free from drugs? Are you addicted to any drugs or alcohol? Uh, addicted to caffeine, yes. Alcohol, no. I use that on very infrequent. Oh, basis. caffeine, I don't judge you for that. I but smoke a cigarette maybe at one a week. No, you got to get over the cigarettes, and, though. And I smoke marijuana on the daily. No, you got to get over See, the marijuana. I used to be addicted to pot. Sure, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, and the Lord created all seed bearing herbs for use by man. Does marijuana have seeds? Yes. Yes, it Are is. Are we not men? Yes. Yes. So what's the problem there? But the problem is when you start smoking the herb bearing fruit, because it said for use meaning medically for it ointments. Did not specify the, the mode of the modality of usage. Well, smoking, sir, I was addicted to marijuana for, many, for a long time. We are justifying all that. Sir, how old are you? Uh, 24. Uh, yeah, I started smoking 40 years ago. Well, come on, man. I want you to be saved, man. You can't be saved if you're smoking pot. You're not 100% saved yet and, and if you're smoking pot. You're not there yet. You got to stop the pot. Get over the pot. We can agree to disagree. No, I'm telling you. You're risking your salvation, sir. You're, you're 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 on this thin line. God's gonna say, you're you're de you you don't want to be on that you fine don't line. Dance, bro. You got to get over the weed. Get over the pot, man. Why can't? Come on, you can stop smoking weed. What's stopping I you from know smoking? I can. What's stopping you then? You know it's a sin. It's a sin. I, I do not believe it's a sin. It's a sin. Come on, it's smoking weed's a sin, sir. It leads to perverseness. It leads to. For me, it led to to pornography. It led to more porn. I would get high. I would want to watch porn, I, sir. I, I was uh, per, weed. Weed. The weed demon has a direct relationship with the homosexual demon. They're brothers and sisters. The weed, the weed demon and the homosexual demon are are, are holding hands. They go one in another because pot smoking leads to homosexual thoughts, homosexual lifestyle, perverse thoughts. I'm telling you, you got to stop the weed, man. So you get saved. So you really can get saved. Really, 100% saved. If you get, man, if you die smoking weed, you're not going to heaven, man. You won't. God won't let weed into heaven. He'll let, he'll let 
if you use the CBD oils and stuff, that's fine. But if you're getting high, no, man, you're playing with fire. You're playing with some serious fire, man. Come on, how hard is weed to stop smoking? You're not even addicted to meth or crack or fentanyl or like the... It's just weed. You can, you can give that up. You probably don't even get that high anymore when you smoke weed. I bet you don't even get high anymore that much. You pr your tolerance I, I is so... I'm about you right now. No, don't, man. Trust me. Trust me. Rethink it, man. Rethink it, bro. Smoking marijuana will send you to hell. If you're smoking weed, it'll send you to hell. Repent. And sexual immorality is sin, too. You can't justify sexual immorality. It's wicked, it's a sin, and it'll send you to hell. Repent. over at and to here. You're preaching out to the masses, to the people. You're preaching to them? Wrong. It was like a movie playing out in my mind. I saw the lust, the anger, the cursing. The, the stealing, the adultery, the hypocrisy, the lies. And then after I was crying out to God, I felt this overwhelming presence just come around me. And then the following morning, now mind you, 7 o'clock in the morning, every morning for two years I was at the liquor store gambling. Mm. I wake up the following day, mm. it's about 7.30. And I'm like, wow, I have no want, no desire to even go gamble. Wow. My, my girlfriend goes to work at that time. Wow, I have no want, no desire to watch porn. Praise God. God literally set me free from my addictions. Hallelujah. And then, mind you guys, I had no biblical doctrine. I, I didn't read the Bible. Though I, I went to church as a, as a child, I didn't pay attention. I could care less. Then I came across 2 Chronicles 7.14. Wow, if my people who are called by my name. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Praise God. Guys, it wasn't a physical land that God was healing. He was healing my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. He was healing God. me. And as the Bible says, God gives a new heart, a heart of flesh. He takes away the heart of stone. He gives you new ears and new eyes. Proverbs 20, verse 12. He puts His Spirit inside of you. Therefore, you will have new desires. No wonder why the following morning I had no desire to watch porn. I had no desire to gamble. was because in that moment, that was my born-again experience of what Jesus was saying. Seek my face. Cry out to me. Repent. Confess and forsake your sins and you will have mercy. But if you try to cover them, you will not prosper, the Bible says. So, the Bible says, not just physically, but spiritually. Amen. You're a land that is destitute of the truth. This is my testimony to you today. The Bible says we overcome by the blood. The, uh, yeah. We, yeah. Come, we overcome yes. Satan. Yes. By our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. That's right. Praise God. Some of you have the greatest testimonies, but you're wasting them. Some of you might have a powerful testimony that can help somebody else overcome sin. But you're throwing it but away. But you're throwing it away yeah, for what? For, a, for some drugs. For a, a temporary satisfaction. The Bible says this in, in, in 2 Corinthians 4.18. Don't look to that which is seen, because that which is seen is temporary. But look to that which is unseen, for that which is unseen is eternal. Your temporary pleasure that you get from heroin, crack cocaine, opioids, is only temporary. You're wasting away your life. And then what? And then you die. And after the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it's appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Yeah. My friends, we want to come here to bring life to you. Because the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's right. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. My friends, stop eating the fruit of your own doing. Stop eating the fruit of evilness. Yeah, that's right. You're reaping your consequences because of drugs. Come to Jesus and be set free. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God, bro.
Amen. I was set free from drugs, pornography, sex, lust, this world. See, many of you are so content with living in your tent and selling your body. I had a conversation with somebody and they told me that 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 they work they that in order to get money to buy drugs, they need to do sexually immoral things with people. He says, I asked him, I said, how do you get money for food and for clothes? He says, I sell my body and I steal. And as Brother Ron was talking about in the Proverbs, how it's prominent in times of old that poor people would steal from other poor people. So that what? You can buy drugs? So that what? You can live in revelry and... I mean, you guys don't even care that you're drug addicts. You guys don't even care that you sell your bodies anymore. You guys have literally been given over to it so much, you don't even care that that's your issue anymore. That's that's wicked. You need to repent. You guys, have any more drinks? You guys just care about, about, about sur water. living another day. If you guys wake up another day, you're happy. And even then, you don't even care about your life that much. You guys need to realize that you're going to die and meet God. You're gonna be you're gonna die and be face to face with God. You guys need to be ready. This is serious. It's not about your drug addictions anymore. It's not about your sex. You guys are gonna die and meet God. Are you ready to be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible says it's appointed a man wants to die, and after this comes the judgment. You know, I had a dream last night. It was a very interesting dream. I haven't had a dream like this in a while. I was living my life like normal, and then all of a sudden. In this dream that I had, it was terrible. Everything was stripped from me. I remember in an instant, in this dream that I had last night. In this dream that I had last night, everything was stripped from me. I had this person that I'm interested to, they were taken from me. I had my, my, my job was taken from me, my house was taken from me, everything was taken from me in this dream. And it felt horrible. It felt horrible waking up. I felt like Job in the Bible where everything was taken from him. In this dream, the person that I loved was taken from me. My, my comfortable home was taken from me. My income was taken from me in this dream. And it was horrible. It was horrible to get everything stripped from you. To get your life stripped from you. To get the person you care about most stripped from you. That's the worst feeling ever. And I didn't deserve it. Most of you guys have been put in a position like this because you deserved to get everything stripped from you. Because you deserved it. Because you stole or you lied or you cheated or you hurt somebody. Enough times where now you're out here on the streets because you stole from your mom or your dad or your sister or your brother or your cousin or your aunt and they took you in and you stole from them and you lied. You, because you stole and you lied and they said, why did you steal my vase and buy drugs with it? Why did you sell my iPad and buy drugs with it? I saw you ac across the corner of the street selling your body. Why are you doing that? I have to kick you out now. You guys are selling your bodies for, for drugs and for alcohol. That's wicked. Come on, honor your bodies. If you're a woman, if you're a woman, I heard there was a pregnant woman here. If you're a pregnant woman here and you're doing drugs, what, what do you think is going to happen to the baby? You're going to kill the baby. You're gonna, your baby's going to come out deformed and retarded because it's taking drugs. You guys need to understand that there's consequences for this. If you're pregnant in this camp, do not do drugs anymore. Take care of that baby. Nourish it. Take care of it. The body says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Lord? I was addicted to drugs and all these things too. But I had to come to Christ. I had to come to the realization that I was going to die and go to hell. If I was li The Bible says that he who sins is a slave to sin. Many of you are in bondage. Many of you are enslaved to sin. You can't give up sin. You refuse to give up sin. I don't want to give up sin. I don't want to come to Jesus. I don't want to turn away from my sin. I love my sin too much. That's too prideful. You guys are too prideful. You guys need to come to Christ already. Repent of your sin. The Bible says to repent, be ye baptized in the name of the in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to humble yourself. And most of you guys are aren't even prideful. Most of you guys are so humble because you've been on the streets for so long. 
You just don't want to come to Christ. Most of you guys are already humble. You just don't want to give up your drugs. How hard is it to say, I don't want to be a, a, a drug addict anymore? How hard is it to say, I don't want to sell my body anymore? How hard is it to say, I don't want to live on the streets like this anymore? How hard is it to come to that conclusion? I don't want to be a drug addict. I don't want to keep killing, killing my babies with drugs and alcohol and more sex. How hard is it to come to that conclusion? I don't want to be on the streets anymore. Everybody should come to that conclusion if you're in this position. I don't want to live in a tent in Seattle anymore where people steal from me and lie to me and hurt my feelings and talk about me behind my back. You guys need to just come to Christ. Repent. Stop doing drugs. Stop having sex with strangers. Stop selling your body. Stop getting drunk all the time. Repent and turn to Christ. And turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that I have bread that you not know of. The Bible says that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Pizza will send, if you, pizza will not save you. More pizza boxes will not save you. More Christian missionaries that come and feed you guys will not save you. None of these things will save you. These are just temporary fixings for your problems. You have a void in your heart. You need to repent. You need to turn to Christ. Humble yourself in the face of God, in the sight of God. Turn from your sin. How hard is it to come to the conclusion that you don't want to be a drug addict anymore? That you don't want to sell your bodies to strangers that pull up and give you a 40 for sexual immoral acts? How hard is it? Repent. Turn to Christ. Realize that Jesus Christ has a better plan for your life. Realize that Jesus wants more for you. But if you're enslaved to sin, if you're a captive... If you're captivated, if you're, if you're in bondage to your sin and you don't ever want to give it up, then you're going to die and go to hell. You will die and you will go to hell. Come to Christ. Seek the Lord while he may be found, the Bible says. To seek him while he may be found. Drugs will send you to hell. Sex outside of marriage will send you to hell. Drunkenness will send you to hell. Lying will send you to hell. Being a hypocrite, being double-minded, being effeminate, being weak, not loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. These things will send you to hell. If you die, if you die in an OD tonight, if one of these homeless guys goes on a crazy rampage and kills you, this very night you will, you're going to be face to face with God. The Bible says it's appointed a man who wants to die, and after this comes the judgment. The judgment seat of Christ is near. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ and seek him while he may be found. I'm telling you guys, in this dream that I had, it was the worst feeling. And to think that you guys live like th that that state that I was in for every day is terrible. I feel so bad for you guys. You guys live in that state that I had in this dream where I lost everything. I lost everything. I lost so a person that was so important to me. I lost the things that I trusted in. And to think you guys live like that every day just breaks my heart. It absolutely breaks my heart to think you guys live like that. I want so much more for you guys. But if you're just like, oh, I just love fan all too much. I, I, I scrap enough money to buy enough drugs to, and I'm okay with that. That's ridiculous. You guys need to realize that you're not living like, like, you guys are not living the way God intended us to live. Right. Not to say you have to have a house. Not to say you have to have a car. You could still be homeless. But if you're addicted to drugs and alcohol and you're doing all these immoral things, you will go to hell. And your life is going to get worse. The Bible says, to those who have none, even what they have shall be taken from them. You guys have nothing and God's constantly stripping away from you guys what you do have. You guys are those people that fit in that category where you have absolutely nothing and God's still taking away. Taking more away. Taking more away. And when is enough going to be enough? When do you say enough? I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to be a drug addict. I hate the fact that the guy next door comes over and has sex with me all the time. That's wicked. You guys probably intermingle all the time. It's, it's, it's not right. It's not of God. It's not pleasing. It's not holy. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Come to Christ. Seek him while he may be found. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, this guy's dr in the dream that I had, and to think that you guys live like that on a 24-7 basis breaks my heart. Jesus Christ has such a bigger plan for your guys' life. Jesus Christ wants so much more for you guys. Amen. He wants so much more. You have no idea. What does it say in Jeremiah, brother? I know the plans that I have for you. God knows the plans that he has for you guys. But you just throw away those plans. You throw away the narrow way. You throw away the life that God wants to give you guys for this.
come on now, sober up. Let's walk in God's plan. Let, let's walk in God's will. Let's follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's seek Him while He may be found. Let's go in that plan that He has for us. Oh, I don't want the plan of God. I love meth. I don't want the plan of God. I'm okay with getting pregnant and killing the baby with drugs every couple weeks. Okay, I don't need the plan. I'm okay with this 40 of Mickey's in my, in my tent. Come on. That's not of God. That's not of God. Be real. That's not of the Lord. If God's going to send normal, normal people from Bellevue to hell for just not believing, how much more are you guys? If God sends normal people like lawyers and doctors and, 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 and physicians and McDonald's and jack-in-the-box and drivers and taxi drivers to hell just because they don't believe, they don't, they're not even living in that much sin. They just don't believe in God and He still sends them to hell. How much more are you guys? Come on now. Sober up. Sober up. Come to Christ. The Bible says to repent. What does it say, brother, in Acts? To repent and believe the gospel. The Bible says to be saved, you have to repent and believe the gospel. That your sins may be blotted out. That, your sins may be blotted out. that at the times, of refreshing, at the times of refreshing, when Jesus comes, you shall be saved. Are you going to say it, brother? Amen. So, 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 what was your name, brother? Jose. Brother Jose asked, what must we do to be saved? That, that is the, the question we would love everybody to ask. How does one get saved? Well, the Bible says in Romans. That's a good question, brother. 10, That's a really good question. 9 and 10. That when we believe in our heart. No, it's perfect. That God raised Jesus from the dead. And when we confess Jesus Christ, the Bible says we shall be saved. But it doesn't stop there. Okay. Like Brother Matthew said earlier, even demons and devils huh? believe in God, huh? and they, and they, what, just they tremble. Yeah. Well, they fear. They fear God. We're doing what God wants us to do. Because of His so. authority, because of His power, and we're just mere we're men. Annoying. So how how much huh? more shall we fear God? And so to be saved, the Bible says we must confess and forsake our sins. Jesus says, no man shall see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. That's right. Okay. Yeah, be born, again too. Be born, again. born again means that when you cry out to God, you repent, you confess your sins, God will make you new and will give you the Holy Spirit to live a new life. He will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you and enable you to say no to sin. Because we cannot do it on our own strength. The helper. We cannot do it on our own will. He will send the helper. He will send the comforter, yep. which is the Holy Ghost. And if you're not born again, well, my friends, the Bible says you will not enter heaven. It's much more than just saying, I believe in Jesus. I've gone to church as a child. It's much more than that, my friends. The Bible says we must obey the Lord Jesus Christ obedience to read his word yeah praise his name brother praise god praise because the bible god. says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god many of you probably already have bible knowledge many of you probably have owned 20 to 30 different bibles but the Bible won't do you any good unless you open it and read it. And you begin to apply what it says. It's almost like when a person wants to go work out. I believe that I could be a bodybuilder. But if they don't go to the gym and work out and eat healthy, guess what? They don't really believe what they're saying. So if a person says, I believe in Jesus, but is not walking in the ways of Jesus, well, do they really believe in Jesus? So if you say I'm a Christian, then you need to be living Christ's life. That's what it means to be Christian. And being a Christian, it's a process of sanctification. Yes, you stumble, but you don't practice sin willfully. Because no one is perfect. But that doesn't mean you go and do whatever you want and live your life however you want. Because your life is not your own. Your life doesn't belong to you to destroy and to get drugged up, and to get drunk, and to commit all types of adultery and abomination and fornications. 
Matter of fact, the Bible says whom you yield your members to, that is who you serve. So if you yield your body to sin, your father is the devil. But if you yield your members to righteousness, it's an evidence of your faith in Jesus. Because you're obeying Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Whom you yield yourselves members, who you yield your members to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. His servants you are to whom you obey. So, if you want to be the servants of God, then you...